What's going on guys? Logan JYA here and today we've got a different kind of machine deck profile for you. No, it's not your usual Drytrons. Today we're cooking with the Orcus. Now y'all already know Harp Horror just got legalized and back in the day before I was the Dry Kage, I was a big Orcus enjoyer. So today we're going to take a look at a pretty simple but powerful build of Orcus Sky Striker. Now listen, you may have heard of a bunch of different kinds of Orcus builds that you can do right now. I'm going to actually have two lists to show you in this video, so stick around to the tail end so you can see another even more powerful high ceiling build of the deck. But the one I'm about to show you still has some fangs to bear, so be sure to smash that like button, comment down below, and if this video exceeds over 100 likes, you best believe we're also going to be bringing back your favorite machines, the Drytrons, as our next deck profile. With all that being said, let's get into it. All right, guys, even though this isn't Drytron, I absolutely do love these machine monsters. Orcist is a classic, all-time favorite archetype of mine, and I'm so glad that we got Harpoor off of the ban list. So today's deck profile, I'm going to show you the build with the cards that I have in hand. Now, mind you, at the tail end, not only am I going to do a combo tutorial, but I'm also going to show you another list at the end of this video that really might be the best way to play Orcist in 2024. But without further ado, let's dive into this profile. All right, homies, starting things off with the main deck monsters, we got triple of the Mech Knight Orcus Girsu, your mainstay normal summon, the most powerful normal summon in the deck, one card combo. He gets the ball rolling, paired with our friend Harpoor, recently legalized. Of course, why would we not play this phenomenal monster? It really does take the deck from zero to 100. The ability to special summon from deck is something that this deck truly needed to get back into its old ways. Now, the supporting cast, we're playing two copies of the Symbol Scale Symbol Skeleton is your Reborn from Grey. Very important for the interactions you're going to be doing on the opponent's turn. And I'm also pairing it with two copies of the Orcus Nightmare. I remember back in the day, we used to summon this beauty off of the Nightmare Mermaid. Oh, it was so diabolical. But of course, we're not doing that anymore. We have to hard draw it or summon it from deck off of Harp or send it in another way. Regardless, we absolutely do still play the Nightmare. And I choose to play it at two for this particular build. In other builds, maybe it makes more sense to play three. We'll talk about that more later. Later on. And of course, the one copy of the World Legacy Wand. This card sucks to draw, but again, it is a pretty essential piece to keep your longevity. It is the cool thing about Orcist as an archetype is that it really does go on forever. All of your cards recycle one another, putting them back into the deck, making it easier for you to keep playing on. It's so hard to outgrind Orcist as a strategy. The only challenge you really face in 2024 is getting outpaced by decks that are newer, have higher ceilings. But I really want to emphasize that these decks really do still have a bite, that being Orcus. Orcus has got some seriously powerful plays, so do not sleep on it. Now that's it for the Orcus package, but we do have a few more members of the supporting cast here. I've got one copy of the Dark Greffer and one copy of Armageddon Knight. Again, I mentioned this, this is more of a nostalgic build of the Orcus strategy, and I needed additional ways to find ways into the engine. Triple of the gear suit just wasn't enough, so I put in the Armageddon Knight and the Greffer, paired them up with a Rota. And the best part is they're also darks and they are foolish burials so they can help empty out our hands or they can just start our plays off. Now moving on the one hand trap monster that I'm choosing to main deck and I think everybody should be main decking this card going into this new format, this wild west, this unknown territory. It's not that unknown. We know what's going to be strong and it's going to be those combo decks. And guess what those combos decks lose to? The mighty Droll and Lockbird. I think it's absolutely worthwhile to main deck this card. And of course as a Drytron player, as the Dry Kage, I despise this card. But knowing that decks like Drytron exist make it even more and more clear as to why we should main deck this. All right, moving into the spells. That's right, we got triple copies of Allure of Darkness for that draw power. We're playing a good amount of darks. Like I said, it's another reason for the Armageddon Knight and the Dark Greffer. They are additional targets for your allure. And we also pair it with, oh, that's right, 37 card deck, baby. Swag Trick Probin at three, Upstart Goblin. You know we gotta play it because if you saw the title, you know that we're also being chilling with the Sky Striker package. So I'm playing two engaged. That's right, I mismatched them, I don't care. and we have one Widow Anchor, one Shark Cannon, one Hornet Drones. This is one of your best pieces. This is just like I said, nostalgic build. This is taking you back right now. This is how we used to do it back in the day. And of course, we got the one copy of Afterburners as well to round out the Striker package. It's a strong four card package, pairs well with the two copies of Engage. I think that's pretty much all you need. 
Then for the Orcus cards, we've got one copy of the Orchestrated Return. This is your draw two. Again, this is searchable off of your Galatea. And then, of course, we play the one copy of the Orchestrated Babel. It does recycle itself, so you need not play more than one. Now for some staple spells, why would we not play them? We got triple copies of Forbidden Droplets. We're not sure what's going to be going on with this format, or at least I'll say this. I'm less aware as everyone else, but I think Droplets is going to be a power spell. And of course, this, we don't really care about the cost that much. It's just like in Drytron. Orcus might be the second best deck to play Droplets in, because when you dump these cards out of your hand, they're actually going to be serving you even better out of the graveyard sometimes. Follow this up with two copies of the Triple Tactics Talent. This, of course, going first or second is phenomenal. We got the Foolish Burial, of course, because this is one of the most powerful spells in the deck. Harp Horror one-card combos just off of Foolish are equally as insane. And then I've got one copy of Rhoda, as mentioned earlier, to search out Greffer or Armageddon Knight, and one copy of Call by the Grave, Sacked by the Grave, in case they try and hit you with some shenanigans, you might have the answer. Now we got some trap cards. Of course we play the one copy of the Orcus Crescendo, your counter trap. This card is of course phenomenal as being an Omni Negate and settable off of your Galatea. And then we round things off with three more hand traps, the Mighty Imperm. This is still probably gonna be one of the best hand traps that you can play. And of course you all know why I love this card. You can rip it as a sixth off the top and you're still set up for success. So that's it for the main deck. Let's get into that extra deck real quick. We got triple copies of Galatea. Why would you not play triple? Well, actually, there are a few reasons not to. And some of the other builds, the more hybrid builds, you're really going to be jamming a lot into that extra deck. But right now, we do have the space for that longevity. Now, there are other flex spots, and I'll point them out, of cards that you might want to play in this extra deck. There's some things that I might just not have on hand right now. But I'm telling you, three Galatea is not a bad idea because this truly will let you play the deck forever and never get out grinded. We also got the one copy of Long Gear Sue. He's another piece of spot removal. He's a key link three to climb into Axis Code Talker with, and he's got that cool removal effect that is a send for whatever is linked. Very, very powerful. Keep that in mind. His effects do come up quite often. He's such a good tool to have in the extra deck. Even as the game has evolved, it's still worthwhile to play. And then we got the two copies of the mighty ding, 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 the classic Ding Gear Sue, the real ulties, none of that fake stuff. We love this card, the non-targeting and phenomenal. The protection effect, very cool. So that is it for the Orcus in the extra. And of course, you know we're playing Strikers, so we're playing a small Striker package. We got the Kegari, we got the Shizuku, and we've got the Hayate. These are only ones that you really need. We're playing the bare minimum of the package here. I honestly, I wouldn't push it any further. I thought about maybe putting in an Azalea. If I was going to add any other striker cards, that is the one that I would put in. But right now, again, the extra deck is tight. I don't see myself playing it. Moving on, we got one copy of Link Karibo, absolutely mandatory, so you can play with that Gearsu token, that level one. This is a dark card, and you can also bring this back from Graveyard. That does come up. And then we got our friends, the IP Mascarina and the SP Little Knight. Oh my gosh, Little Knight takes this deck from 9 to 10. There's going to be a lot of times where you're ending board. The only monster you're going to have on your board is IP Mascarina. But this is so threatening because you're going to be summoning cards out of your graveyard, as quick effects with your Babel, and you're going to be lining up SPs on the opponent's turn. This deck just really does control the game state, and these are your main two enablers to do so. There may even be a case to play another copy of IP. I will say this and I think it takes more testing, but when I got Nibirud and I still had the ability to extend with one more additional summon, I would have been able to make the second IP, which of course would have given me access to the Little Knight. So I think it might be worthwhile to play the second IP, just something to think about, but right now we're just doing one and one. Moving on, we play the one barrel board blocker. This card's absolutely mandatory. Do not cut this card because it is how you get your Orcus cards from hand into the grave if you need to. Engage or Hornet drones with a nightmare in hand can be full combo if you are playing barrel board blocker just because it gets them out of there. And it also can come up to recycle the babble in the late game. I've got one copy of Dark in the extra deck. Of course, it's just another way to climb into Little Knight, but uh, it's okay, you know? I mean, of course, you can still use it when you're Dark Lock, if it does have that floating effect, that could come up to get that free search. But overall, I'm not super duper crazy about this card. I honestly would rather play something like Typhon in this slot. So you're aware, I would probably play Typhon instead of Dark, just to keep that in mind to be 100 with you. And then the last card in the extra deck, I talked about him earlier, I'm playing Access Code. But I'll also flag, there's a case to be made for Boral Sword. Again, Access Code plus Dingirsu is actually not fully game. It's 7,900, which... <laughs> 
<laughs> it blows, but that is what it is. So it's the same logic as in Drytron, where you might have a case to play uh, Boral Sword instead, or you could even take it a step further and consider playing Boral Load, because that card is extremely tricky to remove, and it helps fill in the gaps for some of the other areas where Orcus might struggle. And it is a card that the deck used to play way back in the day. So that's everything for the extra deck. Now let's round things out with the side. Of course, we don't really know what the format's going to look like yet, but this is my best guess. If you have suggestions for what to do better, let me know in the comments down below. But it wouldn't be a profile if you didn't have your beautiful field center, so make sure you get your hands on one of those link in the description, and to have a World Legacy token ready to go to summon off that Dingirsu. All right, side deck monsters. I'm doing the bestial package of two Druus Worm and one Magnemut, but again, this does kind of conflict with the striker cards. I'm not super crazy about it. I actually cut Nibiru from the main and the side because of its conflictions with the striker package. So another card you could play in these cards place, DD Crow. It does the same thing. It's actually even more generic, but, uh, you know, obviously you don't get the free body out of it, so it's a little bit worse there. Think about it. You can always side out the striker cards if you're bringing in the best jewels. Just things to keep in mind. Now, like I said, I'm not doing Nibiru, but I am siding triple copies of Raid and the Kaiju. This is a dark Kaiju, of course, so it's got synergy with the allure of darkness. And again, it doesn't conflict with your striker cards, so you can slap it on top of opponent's interruption without much worry. A free one-for-one -one trade. Very, very strong going second card. I'm also siding triple copies of Ash Blossom, that generic going second goodness. Bring it in in place of the Drolls for the situations where Droll is not good. And then we've got the Thrust, baby. I'm playing two Thrust in the side and pairing it with a army of targets, one of them being Harpy's Feather Duster. Labyrinth is going to be very legit. The Lightning Storm, same deal. Labyrinth, another searchable target for it. We got the Herald of the Abyss for that nasty pearly deck. Yeah, they did get hit again. Are people still going to play it? I'm not necessarily sure, but hey, Herald of the Abyss is a generic removal card at the end of the day, so it doesn't hurt to have it. And finally, the last card I put in here is one copy of Change of Heart. Again, as a thrust target, a very strong going second card that at worst eats a negate or at best can bring you right on back into the game. So that is everything for the profile, but don't go anywhere yet. I'm going to show you a combo, and then we're going to talk more about another build of Orcus that you can play right here, right now. Let's get into it. All right, my friends, it feels so weird to be showing you a one-card combo, but that's exactly what we're going to be doing. I'm just going to show you the basic plays with Gearsu and how this gets you to a high interruption end board with just this one card. Now, I do want to flag you can do the same thing with Armageddon Knight if you opened up Rhoda. You can still end on a very similar, if not the exact same board, so they're pretty much interchangeable. And I want to flag that the Striker package, not only is it good for going second, but you can also use your Engage and your Hornet drones to line up a free extra body on your end board, that being a Shizuku, that also gives you a free end phase search. So again, there's a lot of cool power things that you can do with this deck, even built this way, and it is so much fun to play. It is so nostalgic. It really does feel like back in the day, back in 2019, going to town with Orcus, but we've got a bunch of new fun toys to play with. So first things first, we normal summon that gear so I'll use its effect, sending off the Orcus Nightmare from the get-go. You'll see why I prefer to send off Nightmare a little bit later. Then, while we have no other monsters on the field, we use gear Su's effect. He'll put a token on each player's board. Then we can link our token off off like so, turning it into a Link Karibo on the top, just because we need two effect monsters to go into our Galatea. So we'll link these two off, summon up Galatea on the top, like so, and then we can start playing with our graveyard. We'll use Nightmares Affecting Grave, banishing it, and that will send Harp Horror. We'll target the Orcus Galatea, of course, and then I'll use Harp Horror's Affecting Grave to special summon the symbol Skelly out from the deck. Now, the reason why I like to do this is I like to shuffle back the Harp Horror off of Galatea's effect, so that's why I choose to dump the Nightmare a little bit earlier, but of course you can also uh, send the Harp Horror first and summon Nightmare that way, send the symbol Skeleton a little bit later, it will get you to the same result. So anyway, we'll use Galatea, shuffle that back, and you, here is where you have the choice to either go for Babel or for the Crescendo. Now, depending on the end board that you're going for. I choose normally to go for the Babel, but you can actually set up a board that will end on Crescendo with a pretty much IP set up to tag out into Little Knight after you use your Crescendo Negate. So they're both very, very strong. In games two and three, sometimes it makes a little bit more sense to go for the Crescendo because your opponent might have brought in some spell and trap removal to deal with that Babel. If so, Crescendo is going to be your best friend. So anyway, we're going to use Babel for this demonstration. So that gets set from deck, we'll put it right back face up. 
Next, I'm gonna slap a Dingirsu on top of that Galatea using its effect to reattach that Orcus Nightmare from the Banish Pile underneath it, and then we link to off into the IP Mascarina on the top like so. Now, you could just be done here, but I think it's pretty nice. Since we have that symbol Skelly we've yet to use, we can banish him from the grave and summon out that Galatea like so. And we are pretty much set up for success here. So we got a free tag out. Our IP Mascarina is currently protected from battle destruction. And so is our Galatea since they are both linked, which is actually really, really strong. And then we are still set up to play on the opponent's turn by using the Nightmare Engrave. We can send another symbol skeleton or a Harp Horror if we so desire. We could send a Harp Horror and then link it off with the IP Mascarina to go into Little Knight that way and then use Harp Horror's effect. Or also we could do the same thing, uh, sending Harp Horror, banish it, getting Symbol Skeleton, using that to link off. There's so many different ways you could do it, but the whole point is you set up the IP, you have your free tag out for the Little Knight, and you also have the ability to get access to another copy of Symbol Skeleton and use it to bring back that Dingirsu and have a send on the opponent's turn. So again, this is a very simple build of Orcus. It's a control slash mid-range build of the deck, but it does play for days, and it is really, really strong and really, really fun. I strongly encourage you guys to give this build a try, especially if you don't have your hands on the Horus cards yet. But if you do have the Horus cards, what I'm about to show you might be even more appealing. So let's check that out before we bring things to a close. All right, party people, I promised you one more list, and that's what I got for you here. Now, while we were focusing on Sky Striker Orcus for the primary profile, I wanted to show you what I think might really be the most powerful high ceiling variant of Orcus going into the new format. And this is my teched out version of Horus Orcus. I'm not going to spend time going through it card for card and showing combos. I'm going to wait until I have all the cards in hand to do that. But I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a sneak preview on a different take for this deck. And the one where I should say the two key tech points I really want to point out are playing the full package of the Horus monsters. I think in this variant, if you're not playing the striker cards, you definitely want to play all of the Horuses, at least one of, of the different names that aren't Emseti. And then one other thing that I thought was super duper cheeky, another way to play around hand traps, think about it as called by the grave copies two and three, is teching in the now two of copy of Speedroid Terror Top and pairing it off with the Gossip Shadow in the extra deck to give you a free blanket from any monster effect interruptions that your opponent might try and throw at you. Just turn them into both players, draw one card. That feels pretty darn good to me. Or it's just another end board negate that is not a dark, so you're not playing it a super poly as hard. It's a pretty strong and cheeky thing you can do. Now, the reason why I really like the Horus build is because it gives you that blanket protection from things like Nibiru by lining up those Photon Lords early. Or it gives you access to the Zombie Vampire if you got to go RNG hunting for part of your Orcus package. There's so much that this engine enables for the deck that I strongly encourage you all not only to try out the Striker build, but to give this one a try as well. Some other key tech cards I want to point out here are the the Cherubini in the extra deck, which also pairs well with the Speedroid Terror Top. If you want to do Terror Top, take Tom Borg into Cherubini, and you can use that to send Symbol Skelly from deck. That is another free dump that you can take advantage of. And one other thing is this boy right here, Topologic Zora Boros and Boral Sword. So we're doing Boral Sword in this build because all of our links in the extra deck are dark. You wouldn't have many pops with the access code. It just makes more sense to do Boral. And Zora Boros is a diabolical card we used to play back in the day in Orcus. Imagine blowing up and banishing all all of those back rows from that Labyrinth player. I would probably play this in the Striker build as well. I just don't currently have one on hand, and it's iffy. Like I said, the extra deck space in that Striker build are very, very tight, so if you wanted to cut the dark and put in Zora Boros, I'd say that's a phenomenal option as well, because you can tag out your IP and your Galatea, make Zora Boros, and then use it. Say you're playing as Labyrinth, they set four pass on you, make the Zora Boros summon back something from Grave using Symbol Skelly, and then banish the whole field. It's absolutely insane. So, just more insanely good cards to consider playing in Orcus, and I'm glad you guys stuck around to the end of the video so you get to hear this extra little bit of knowledge and see this other take on the deck. So if you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to smash that like button. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and that's all I got for you guys today. Logan JYA signing off. Have a great day. I'll see you beautiful people later. Peace. Get it.